on an opening statement. I thought that our uh, effort on defense um, was uh, very good tonight in spurts. Uh, really trying to do a good job not taking risk and trying to stay between them and the basket. If they're open, they knock down shots. And um, I thought that changed the tempo as well as playing defense and rebounding, being able to get out, Dee running straight down the middle of the floor to get some layups in the beginning of the second half. And I thought with April Wilson having nine assists and KK having eight, that means people are knocking down shots and we're able to go inside, outside. And just really proud of the effort. Again, IPFW is a very good basketball team. They went into Michigan State and won there. Um, so, and I have a lot of respect for both programs. So uh, for us to take care of business was great. Courtney, you guys went inside to start the second half. How much did that open things up for you on the perimeter? Um, it definitely opened it up. Uh, they had to start sucking in down side because their posts were doing such a great job finishing down low that it allowed for some openings outside. I mean, the, the start of that second half, I think you guys were 13 or 14 or something and, you know, moving the ball well and, and finding openings. Just, I mean, do, do you feel like you guys were sort of clicking offensively on, on all cylinders at that point? Yeah, we were just uh, definitely executing what we've been practicing uh, with the coaches that prepared for us and really paying attention to detail. And we just listened to the coaches and it worked out. <coughs> Lisa, after they had cut it back to five there at the half, what was sort of the message in, in, in halftime? To, you know, it seemed like you guys wanted to try and get it inside there pretty early on in the second half. Uh, pretty much playing defense first and foremost. Um, defense carries over to offense, so as long as we got to stop on defense, and it brought us our offense to be able to play hard. What kind of openings did you find in their zone inside? Uh, the middle, open. Um, so if you attack, you can dish it out, and guards are heading down shots. So that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon, just the, the start of that second half was that you know pretty much what you want. Offensively, uh, you know, if you're moving the ball like that and knocking down shots, it, it works out pretty well, right? Yeah, we were really trying to do the mid post baseline uh, quite a bit, and uh, we weren't shooting the ball exceptionally well the first half. So, if you can kind of settle down and, and hit some layups, but our defense and needing running down twice, we need a post player running in the middle of the floor. Um, she was able to get two layups. I mean, she shot four for five at 10 points a day. That, I mean, that's big for us. I and mean, post players have to run the floor um, for them to open it up for the guards. but. All I'm going to say is the Stanford, TCU, and Duke made us better. You know, we've been going against zone against 6'5", 6'4", 6'3", and, and so we were able to utilize quite a bit, pass better, um, do a lot of different things, and be extremely efficient because of the teams we've played. Petey, just coming off the emotional game Thursday against Duke, just how you guys handled today and to win by this margin, what does that tell you about where, you, where your team's at right now? Um, it just tells us a lot. It tells us that, you know, we actually learn from games. Even from the Stanford game, from the TCU game, and into the Duke game, uh, we've learned a lot since then. Like Lisa was saying, our passing has gotten better. Um, our inside-outside game has gotten better. So just seeing that and knowing that we're able to learn from other games is really good for this team. Dee, did you feel like you guys were able to, to flash to some openings inside there and, and get some pretty easy looks? Definitely. Um, even with that and then that, them co collapsing it on us and having Courtney and KK and everybody on the outside knocking down shots, um, that really helped us out. So I feel like us going to the middle has got our guards open on the outside. Sharon, what was the mood at halftime like? Because you, you, you had gotten it up to 13 and then all of a sudden down to five. Was it sort of, you know, like you felt like there was some fire in there to, to try and come back and, and get it back up pretty quickly? Oh, yeah. I mean, I went in there and just said we had a 14-point game and it cut to five, and we were playing one type of de defense and taking too many risks. And when we take risks, we don't do well. But if we're playing really well and getting good traps, that's one thing. And So I put that on myself as a coach and said we're not going to do that anymore. And, well, we just played solid, and they were fine. Um, you know, so I said we're fine, but we've got to get out to a great start and be able to, you know, do some things. And, you um, you know, I just think our defense is, is really what got it. I mean, they only shot 36% in the second half. In the first half, they shot 56%. So that's what it comes down to. Courtney, is your ankle fine, apparently? You said it was. It seems like it is. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> just did, did you feel like you were able to do today what, you know, Duke and maybe to some extent Stanford were able to do to you? Just sort of, you know, put, put a team away in the second half? Yeah, um, if you look at the scores, um, the second half, we scored 51 points, and that's what... Um, the Dukes and the Stanford were doing to us, so we were able to do that on somebody else. Ms. Sharon, similar to Dee, but just how your team put Thursday behind you quickly and 
took care of business today, and that is how much have they grown in that area just that, this this season, going from game to game like that. Well, I mean, um, you know, it's I see my job as being a teacher, and you want to be able to you know grow on each facet. You know, like math, you got to accumulate, you got to know this and understand this, and I think you know. I think we have great leadership. I think our three seniors do a great job um, of leading. I think uh, Lisa's taken some leadership role in the post. And I think, um, you know, for us, the TCU game, we got better in the post. The Duke game, we got better in the post. Um, and so we're just learning quite a bit from that, you know. And uh, the Duke loss, we didn't get over very well until Saturday morning. And their bodies were still really sore. But mentally, emotionally, we were still not in a good place till Saturday. And that's good. It means your team's hungry because you know you were that close to to playing that well on someone else's court and um, you know so I'm really proud of this group I'm hard as heck on them I mean no, nothing's ever satisfied but I I keep telling these three seniors I want to leave a legacy and these everybody else has got to keep playing for them and Purdue but when you're a senior that sense of urgency goes up. Sharon what's your understanding of the block charge rule? I have no understanding <laughs> of the block charge rule. I, I don't have an understanding of it. So um, our players just have to keep um, trying to adjust every game, every minute, every possession, and it's really hard for them to play. And I'm just really proud of them, how they handled it. How they handled it, I'm not sure how I handled it as well. But, um, but that being said, it needed to happen for me to get a team. Dee Dee, you know, Sharon mentioned that she is hard on the seniors, you know, hard on all the team, but do you, do you welcome that? Is that is something that you guys needed, wanted, you know, embraced? Definitely. Um, we talk about it all the time. Like, if we didn't have a coach like Coach B, like, I feel like we would just not necessarily give up, but she never gives up on us if we don't want to give up on her. And she's the type of coach where she's going to get on you, but at the same time, she's teaching you, like she said. She's a great teacher. And, um, you know, being hard on us, we love it because that pushes us, her being the technical, all that. It pushes us, it gets us hyped, it gets us going. So um, having a coach like Coach B is amazing. Sharon, just the plan for the week with finals and, you know, how much will you practice? And this, you know, this is a regular exercise you have to go through yeah. every year. Uh, Monday, Wednesday will be off. Tuesday will be more of a fundamental practice to keep them moving, keep them in shape. Um, we'll go two hours and they'll lift on Tuesday and then Thursday they'll do the same thing. We always have to go around their schedules. Um, then Friday we'll start getting more focused, you know, on our opponent Kansas. Most of our kids' finals um, are done on Friday, so a lot of them can hopefully get a little refreshed and then we leave Saturday. It's going to be a tough road game. Have you been able to find out what works in finals week dealing with kids or is each year different? It's based on the, the team that you have. Every year is different because it depends on the load. Um, you know, some some players have two finals. Some may just have a presentation. Some have four or five. Um, so I think the toughest thing is freshmen coming in. Um, Ashley and Bridget, even though they don't think uh, they're fatigued and tired, they definitely are um, sometimes. All the players yesterday kind of had a blank look because, you know, they're just studying. I mean, they've got a lot to do. So there's no rhyme or reason for it, but I, I just think um, – you know, as long as we take care of business and do what they need to do and utilize their time, they're fine. But, like, Hayden's got four or five exams, so. Somebody, KK has one. <laughs> but she's a senior, so, you know, so it, it's just different. You turned the right Yes. <laughs> Fifth-year senior, yeah. All right, thanks, guys.